Hi guys, we're back now and we're going to tackle those last two techniques before we're ready to start our project. I did do two little things while you were working on your wet and wet technique. I cleaned out the mixing well in my tray so I got rid of all of that dark red burgundy color that was in there from when we did our shading scale. And I also put down a new sheet of paper. So those are the two things that I want you to run and do right now. I want you to clean this out and I want you to put down your second technique sheet and tape it down all the way around, okay? So when you're done that, come on back and we're gonna start our next technique. And this is a good one to know because it's going to help you with not necessarily mistakes because we don't say mistakes in our class. We always say happy accidents because you never know what's gonna happen. But this is something important to know that if you want to change something or if you want to move things around, you have to act quickly with watercolor and you can use what we call the sponging out technique. So that's gonna be this. So we're gonna start with creating something called a wash. And we do a lot of washes in watercolor. Um, and this is very similar to when you did your tinting scale. So remember when you did those really light, pretty pinks and they were very pale and those tinted layers because they had so much more water in them than they did color. So we're gonna do the same thing, but we're gonna do it with blue this time, okay? So what I want you to do is use your big brush again. You can see my brush in the water here. And I'm gonna scoop out water, just water by itself. I put water in my mixing well. So I'm putting a nice puddle of water there. And then I'm gonna add a little bit of my fallow blue, which is this nice bright blue that's in your tray. And I'm gonna stir it up. So I end up having a very thin wash of that fallow blue. Putting a little bit more in there because I want it to stand out a bit so that you can see it at home. But washes are meant to be fairly pale and that's great. You can always darken them up in watercolor. You can't go back. You can't make things lighter. You can make it darker, but you can't make it lighter. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to paint half of our sheet of paper with the blue wash. And the trick is when you paint the wash, you want to go quickly and keep everything the same consistent wet. So that's why I'm going back and forth here. And I'm going to add a little bit of water and just keep moving things around. So you can see it's nice and puddly, it's nice and shiny. And then I'm very, very quickly going to grab a piece of my paper towel that's all scrunched up, it's all wrinkly, and I'm going to push it down into my pretty blue wash. And something magical is going to happen. When I count to 10, one, two, three, four, five, six, ten, 10, I'm going to pull it off, and then I magically have a pretty, fluffy, little white cloud. Isn't that lovely? Can you see it there? Not really. There it is, my little fluffy white cloud. I don't want to turn my sheet too much because my wash will end up running down the page. So you can fluff this up a little bit with your paper towel and it's good to know that your paper towel is going to sponge out anything that's wet. That includes some color. So you have the ability now to be able to pull up bits of color if you want and change things around or if you um, have a happy accident and you happen to drip some color in a section that you don't want, you can very quickly grab your paper towel and go and suck it right back up. So sponging out technique, very, very easy. The trick is with this to get it to work properly is that it has to, your, your, whatever you're sponging out or soaking up has to be wet. It's not going to work if it's dry. Paper towel's not going to soak anything up if it's dry, right? Okay, so that's technique number three. The last thing that I want you to practice is doing some detail work with your tiny brush because painting details for watercolor, acrylic, oil, anything like that, you have to practice. You have to know how to hold your brush. You can't expect yourself to just automatically know how to paint details if you don't practice, right? So it's important to know how to hold your brush to get it to work the way you want it to. Um, and some of those tricks can be the brush itself. So if you have an old frayed brush and it's all wrinkly and stuff, it's not gonna give you really fine detail and you're gonna get frustrated. So make sure you've got a good brush, a brush that when you dip it in the water that you can shape into a really nice little point, okay? And what we're gonna do is we're gonna use, go back to that black because we wanna practice doing some details. And if you change your mind, you don't have to use black, you could use a dark color, but just something that's easy to see. And I want you to practice making straight lines standing up and straight lines lying down. And to do that, 
you have to brace your hand against either the tape or down. You can butt it here, or you can hold your other hand this way, okay? And what you want to do is you want to start at the top and you want to pull. Paintbrushes don't work if you push them. You want to pull. So start at the top and pull down. And see if you can make long, skinny lines. Okay, I'm going to grab a bit more paint. And every time you might have to go back to the paint a little bit, so that's good. So practice making some straight lines. And then I want you to do some lines lying down, some so, so some horizontal lines. Excuse me, I'm getting tongue tied. Okay, so we're doing horizontal lines. And then I want you to try and do zigzag lines. All right, so know how your frame brush is going to move. It's going to change as you move your brush around, right? And the last one I want you to do is a swirl line, okay? So like a spiral. So you can start on the outside and go in, or you can start on the inner and go out. It's entirely up to you. But I want you to see how your bristles are going to move when you try to do a curved line. Need to add a little bit more water. Drop yourself back in. There you go. All right, so those are our last couple of techniques. You've done a fabulous job. So all you can do right now is clean yourself up. You want to rinse out your clean out your mixing tray. You can just mop that up with your paper towel. Get some fresh water. Reset your spell your space back up so that everything's nice and neat and tidy. Get yourself a brand new sheet of paper and come on back, hit that next link, and we'll start our project.